Welcome back to Blue Ocean Talks. Today here in the studio with me is Leo, my fellow director here from Beijing, visiting us here in Singapore. Leo, how you doing? Very good, very good. Happy to be in Singapore. Awesome. And today we have a special guest, the amazing Susan Jean, who is based also in our Singapore office. Susan actually wears multiple hats in our organization. She's one of those special people. One of those responsibilities is actually overseeing and managing our embedded services. And that's really what we're here to talk about today. Susan, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> <laughs> Susan's a bit nervous. It's okay. Um, Susan's been in the industry like us for a long time and really one of, the, one of our amazing team members here in Singapore. Susan, before we jump into this whole, uh, all these questions about embedded services, can you maybe briefly with a couple of sentences Tell us what is embedded services exactly, and um, like what is that to, to our customers, and how do you see that? <laughs> embedded service is um, actually we are hiring the employee for our client, so like um, legally contract is under us, right. and then the. The candidate or the employee actually is work in the client office and also be familiar with the client operations and do exactly what the client requires for them. So they work full-time in the client's office, in various roles, but they are, they are employed by us. They are legally our employee. We train them. We get them set up. We get all that organized, but they work full-time in the client's office yeah. as part of the client's security team, right? Yeah. Usually that's the case. And what are these roles generally? Like what are they typically, what, are, what is a typical kind of role around embedded services? So any security related could be. So it could be security managers. It could be a security operations center. It could be security engineers. Um, anything related to security actually uh, can be, the client can require about the embedded service from us. True. In China, we also have a team embedded to take care of the client current systems. Mm. So it's about break and fix. It's about uh, project acceptance. So if there's a new project delivered, our people also behaving for the client is going in to make sure the quality is in place. So that's another type of embedded. Right. So in many cases, um for example, we have these embedded services here in Singapore. We have them in India. We have them in China right now. And we're actually actively bidding on other locations and around Asia. But I think the majority of our roles are around SOC management, like actually managing a uh, security operations center. We have project managers, uh, security managers. Uh, what else would you say? Service, service General embedded services. service. And uh, we also, in India, we have a team to watch the system for them, but it's more like a system admin team, mm. not SOC, mm -hmm. but they just just overall seeing the platform uh, and make sure all these devices is healthy. And if there's a thing, uh, if there's a situation, they will just get in and and, and work with the Maintain different the people. Troubleshooting. Right, it's mainly the like a like a, operations. Yeah, make sure the system is functioning well. It's in in shape. Right, and. So this is actually an interesting trend we've seen, I think, like 20 years now, where some multinationals, where they have a lot of their own, like, full-time employees, but they have a lot of outsourced, like, con they have different names for it, uh, contract employees, or, you know, I remember Microsoft was famous about doing, what, blue badge and green badge or something like that. But basically, it's where a security team, they don't have the headcount to hire full-time, but they actually want, they need more resources on their team. So it's an easy way for them to do that without having all the bureaucratic aspect of hiring, correct? Yeah, it's more effective in their way. Um, works will need to be done, but in, in, in the same time, they don't have to hire from the beginning the whole team. They don't have training. to do, yeah, the training, the onboarding, the legal part. They can just focus on getting things done with a professional partner. Mm. So, so I think that's the, the main purpose of having this service. Mm. Usually that's uh, like the client may have limitation about headcount uh, while they still have like an additional budget for other services. 
uh, that's also one of the reason. Thing. So it's more like an OPEX, like an operation cost from their budget, but not a headcount related. Yeah, mm. and in some ways also free hassles for them because they don't have to really care about hiring parts. True, right. And the also if people like exceeding, uh, we as our company, we are responsible for to find a replacement to them immediately. They, they are totally like hassle free. True. Also, I think many businesses, especially in Asia, they grow really fast and they, it's hard for them to predict where they are going to be three years after. Mm. So it's safer to work with the external party to, to build up the team. Then later, is they give them more flexibility to add on or decrease. Mm. It will be a different story if you have your own people. Again, hired, trained, and then later let go. It will be a big hustle. Mm. Do you think there's any conflict of interest that if we're working with this client doing projects, for example, but they also have embedded services, is, is there any possible potential conflict of interest here uh, in this point? Uh, there could be, if I understand you correctly. Uh, so in our cases, there's some embedded service team. And even for me, I would, I would try and tell, uh, like warning them to say if there's any confidential related to this account, you don't have to share with me. And this, because they also need to comply with the client's confidentiality there. So what you're saying is that at a policy level, we make sure it's clear mm -hmm. that there's a, there's a separation mm -hmm. from that point of view. They report uh, on a daily basis to the, to the clients, that manager, they report back to us in a way that's kind of more of a, from a legal administrative perspective, but work re work related. There's kind of like a a firewall uh, between that, and at least from what I can see, I don't see any conflict of interest. You're right that there's potentially there could be, but it maybe it depends on also how they're managed. Right. How you how you draw a line between your operations to to your embedded service, so they act independently. They all follow their own practice. There's a handbook of each. They just need to, the, for the embedded team, they just follow client's handbook. Mm. For our operations team, service team, PM team, they just act like those are the client. They just work with them. Well, I was surprised we have one client here in Singapore with a rather large embedded team. And the head of that team, who's also one of our uh, legally, you know, one of our people, she's pretty tough. If she sees there's a potential for common, she, she will speak up and say, hey, oh, no, that's... So that's the right way to be. Exactly, right. So how are we different then from like a regular staffing company? Like, well, how would you, because some companies, they can just go to a, there's like staffing companies, right? Many, yes. Right, how, how are we different then from that? Actually, it's tough uh, since they are not working in our office uh, here. Uh, however, um, in some way, we, they are still part of our company. And even they are not working in the same team with us, uh, still, we need to let them feel they are part of the team. So such as we, what we can do, even in the first couple of weeks, there's onboarding training uh, and make sure he know all our company's people and to know if when he's working in a client site, uh, if encounter any question or technical support, he will know who to approach to. Even he just working alone in client sites, just make sure he understand he's not working alone, actually. There is a, a big team behind him to support him. Right. I that's think that's also kind of challenging, but uh, make us, um, make our company service stand out compared to other companies like a uh, agent company sure, service. Sure. So we are in the same business and we are really doing the technology and system related services. So for that, it's a big plus. Otherwise, if you just do regular staffing, I cannot say the name, but some even people's doing um, cleaning and even doing property management, they can do staffing on security too. But the difference is we are in the industry. There's no added value. Right. We can easily uh, bring more resources to the team. Technically or people-wise, we know the right OEM. We know the history of the site. Uh, so, so it will become a, a big difference for us to staffing people and do the work compared to a, a people or a company from other industry mm -hmm. doing like a, the staffing. Like a, like a generic staffing company, you mean? Yes, yes. So We're also able to train 
to provide training and better onboarding. Mm. We're better equipped to find replacements if need be. Mm-hmm. Correct. I think that's also some clients see our value here. Um, for one client as example, at the very beginning, because they were in totally different business. However, they need their security team in their sector, but they are not really um, like expert in this uh, industry. That's how they approach us because we are strong technology background here and we know what kind of candidate to approach to. And we can also be um, like the big support behind that person. This is all the extra value the client will get from us, actually. Right. Right. I also feel the retention rate is actually better because we as a company have many different line of service. So if the embedded team, they want to have a a long runway to the future, they can choose to, after this post, after the embedded service, they can come back to Blue Ocean and doing other uh, works uh, related to systems and technology. So that's another uh, Right, that's a good point. So we we are mindful of the fact that we try to create a, a longer term development path for these folks. So if their if their contract finishes with a certain client, we try to uh, find roles for them within our company or with another client. And we don't just treat them like a temporary uh, staff and then just tell them to go home. So this also reflect to their day to day. You see higher energy. You see bigger passion because of they can see the future uh, with Blue Ocean. So, right. I also know that. And maybe Susan, you can elaborate on this, but we can, we try to treat them not just as a staff. So for example, we do have uh, periodical calls with them, see how they're doing, do they need any extra support? So it might not necessarily be about their daily work that they're doing with the client, but it's more at a personal, at a people's level of service, touching base, uh, making sure that they know that there is another, there's a team here behind them, that they have the support from them. And that we're here, we're, we're trying to approach it, I think, differently than other companies in the market. Yeah, I think the, the biggest mistake is actually hire people and throw them to the clan site and don't even talk right. to Just them. Just warm bodies. Right. So, so what we do, you're right. Uh, we do regular reaching out. We even invite some of the embedded people to join our event, like our Ocean's Day. Right. Once a year, the everyone getting together, the uh, big team building. So that gives them an opportunity to see people they work with day to day. They also give them the, the confidence that we see them see them like a part of, the, of this organization and they're going to enjoy and share uh, the growth of the business uh, and be part of the business. So, Yeah, uh, again, this part of business, actually, we don't treat ourselves uh, an agent in the market. We're totally not an agent company. Um, whoever we hire, no matter it's in our office or it's in the client embedded service, they're part of our team as period. Okay, so how do they, uh, how can we make them feel they're part of our team? Uh, although they fully like working in client side, that's the job we need to think about. Like uh, Ron and Leo mentioned about, we have a regular reach out with them. We invite them to come back to visit our office to, do, uh, to have our events. Uh, like every birthday, there are always some like a birthday cake or some wishes. That's great. So it's more kind of, it's just, they are part of us. Uh, that's, that, that's, uh, we didn't treat them as part of us. So that's, that's just whenever, what we do. I think whenever we are traveling to their location, to their city, mm-hmm. we visit them into their work. We also sit down with the client side people working with them, mm-hmm. uh, having a chat, how he is doing, how we can do better. Mm-hmm. But in the same time, also be the, I guess, the backup force to our invited people. Let them know, okay, mm-hmm. uh, there's a, a big team behind mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. and everybody cares. So, so I think that's all good practices. Yeah, I think that helps too. Uh, that's how our company business uh, expanded quite uh, a lot. Because it's different. Like I interviewed a lot of candidates. Uh, they will see your company is quite different uh, because like the, in their previous experience, uh, then the company just hired them two times. He saw the, he met the, that company's people. So it's first time when, when they hire them. Uh, second time is when say goodbye to them. 
I, I think it's very sad in some way. Um, everybody deserves a good treatment from that company. And it's more kind of human touch that also make us, our company, different in the market. And compared to other companies, like our turning over rate relatively uh, is better, is, is, is lower more, than others. So, so folks, you realize now why Susan's responsible for the service, right? <laughs> Oh, it's uh, another good, interesting example is even like in when situation happens, the embedded team become part of the client's team and they got formally hired by for the client. We still remain the relationship. We still got in touch. Right. It will benefit again, both sides. Uh, last weekend, I'm, I'm in Singapore. Right? I'm this close to get into a badminton game with one of the embedded. They for, refer yeah. another candidate to us. Right. They still keep referring but candidates that's, that's, to that us. That is interesting because that is a kind of a little bit of a, from a, on a surface, that is a risk to us that the client ends up saying, you know something, I like this person a lot. I'm going to cancel this contract I have with you. I'm going to hire this person full time. Um, and I think our attitude towards that has been, if we have a greater relationship with the client, that, okay, uh, we try to talk to the client. Right, we don't about want it, to be hard. That, right? Yeah, we don't want to be too hard. And again, we see because of the the, the, the relationship we spent time to build on, uh, we see a better future, no matter what. Um, so uh, again, uh, keeping in touch. Uh, we also, I, I just came back from Sydney. Um, the people who take this person to their team is also there. So we have a lot common to, to chat. I think we all, we have common interest to build on people and make them better. And at the end of the day, it's a small industry, right? We, we want to have more friends in the industry and not, right, right, right. And not enemies, right? So just uh, another question here, like what type of companies are usually interested in embedded services? Like, cause have you identified, cause obviously not every company uses embedded services. Uh, what type of company you think would be would be using this kind of service or might be interested or benefit from these kind of services? Susan, this, that's a question to you. <laughs> well, I think security uh, is, is one part in most of the company, in most of our clients, because all our clients are MNC basically. And security is part of the business. Uh, whenever they... Uh, they, they don't have enough headcount, and while they still need the service, there is a need mm. for us, actually. I think we covered this a little bit early on right, right. Uh, to say. Fast growth, and uh, again, they treat security seriously. Mm -hmm. They do not want the facility team or general admin team to run this part, or maybe they can oversee this effort, but they want a professional group of people doing this. So those will be the, the typical clients. Uh, additional point, I think it's um, our existing clients who already know us, who already know our style, who already know our professionalism, uh, who already know what kind of service we're able to the, do. The trust. So place. yeah, there's kind of trust they're already there. That's how they approach us. Uh, like the Singapore, the case here, uh, originally their service were, was provided by another security company. Uh, however, after doing some projects, they were asking us, oh, you were like a system very expert in this industry. So we need your help. And then they involve us, engage us, and they see the difference. Yeah, yeah. That's how they fully they, engage us with all the Overall, they have the confidence that we are going to behave and act no matter what, the, in the same way. Mm. Having an embedded team, without the embedded team, we all give them the best possible support. So they ha have the confidence so they can pass more to, to us. Do you guys see any differences between the regions? Like, for example, currently we have embedded services in India, China, and Singapore. Again, I know we're bidding on, on other regions, but if we just look at those three regions, do you have identified any differences? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, so far, I don't have much comments. I think, okay, if what I can observe, uh, in China, the client is more concerned about the cost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, everywhere. I, I think... Mm. In general, the openness 
varies from different type of client, but not maybe not region wise, mm. the business they are in, uh, what their expectation are there with the embedded service. So that make a, a difference. Some client totally open up. They from the beginning they even invited uh, invited us to sit into their um, annual meeting to know their procedure well, know their pur right, purpose so there's well. There's more integration. Yeah, so that give you better understanding about their goal and their target. I also make that easier for your team to deliver that. And, and they also see the value from us that because we see the better practices in the market. So we can introduce some of the cooler tools to them as well. So that's, that's, that's one style. Another style is uh, having a very cl clear ABC, uh, this checklist from top to end, and you just deliver that. So that's, that's, that's a different uh, style. Uh, it's a, a, both working and both working well, but we, if there's a recommendation, I will suggest the client give us more information, not confidential, but just tell us the, the objective. Yes, we understand you want me to do A, B, C, D, E, but the, if you can tell me the reason behind, we can be better be part of You're that. You're in a better effort. position to provide right. value. Right, right, right. right. So. And I know that, for example, in China and India, the whole administration of benefits and all the legal environments is slightly more complicated than Singapore, I would say, as well. Like simply firing a person, if, that, if a client comes and says, I don't like this person, just get rid of them. There's, it's a bit more, the administration of that process is a bit more complicated maybe than Singapore. True, true. But that's, I guess that's the cost of doing this business for us. And, and again, we, we have a long runway with Blue Ocean. We don't have to always do exactly the, uh, the, the clients instruct us to do. So maybe the people will leave their current post, but we can manage to find another gross pass to, to this individual. So yeah, it, it is a um, cost to consider. But it doesn't have to be a a challenge or a risk. It be it, it can be built in a different way. Um, okay. Any disadvantages to, to to do this, like for a client? Would you think for us or for the client? Or for both, whatever you want to say. But I was referring to the client. So obviously, we talked about advantages the client has, like. Is there any disadvantages? Maybe it's slightly more expensive. I'm, I'm trying to think. Disadvantage, uh, like Leo already mentioned, number one, there could be some legal point of legal legal issues. So, for example, the client may want to to say, "I'm not happy with this guy's performance. I want to hide. I want to fire." So we need to take care of all the rest legal things, uh, but we need the client to support us to provide those proof mm. because in some way there will be like a um, compensation uh, payment. Mm. Uh, it ends up maybe we need to take all of those uh, But payments. But I will say that's a disadvantage for us. It's a benefit for it's the client. It's a risk for us, right? right. Yeah, right, yeah right, right. that's true. So, so all you know, if I'm the client, um, I think the, the, the only thing other than call that disadvantage of this service, the only thing I need to think through and be ready is I'm going to give this transparency of my, this part of my business to a third party. Uh, how do I overall control that information and make sure the service is too standard and make sure this information will be well protected. So I think that's the only thing I need to think through and build a framework around that. Otherwise, I've, as a client, I, I don't see a... Yeah, that's um, our risk, actually. And I think another reason the client like our service is, uh, thank you for the word transparency, because we are totally transparent to our client, actually. So starting from the quotation stage, uh, what candidate, how many candidates will oh, recommend they're also it to part them. of the interview, right? They, right? And they are the decision maker who they finally, they like and they think is good, perfect, uh, good fit for it. So that's a good point. So just want to touch on that for a second. So I, I, I hope our listeners are clear about that, that when we quote this, when we give a proposal, it's all transparent to the customer. How much salary the person makes, the benefit amount, the training cost, 
uh, risk uh, factors, but also our markup, so to speak. That's all a transparent process with the client. Yeah, it's yes. typical cost plus structure. Yes, uh, I know in the market uh, there are some others quoted as a lump sum number. Okay, if it's a lump sum number, then the client doesn't know that that the, the person they hired how much they make, so, and they are not very sure how the margin is. In that way, there is a risk to say. Um, that company can try to reduce that employee salary in, instead, like in order to get better margin for fair, themselves. Right. Uh, that ends up the candidate may not that good uh, for the client. For sure, but for they us, lose their energy, right? Like a, yeah. the moment they figure out that the company in the middle is making a cut mm -hmm. or too big a cut, mm -hmm. uh, that's a moment they lost their uh, energy. We do have actually when we sometimes when we take over. Uh, um, a, a contract, we realize some of the team members was not being treated in a fair way. So um, one of my last questions here that I wanted to ask is, um, what type of suggestions do you have for customers that either want to improve, they haven't, they already have some embedded staff, they want to improve how that's being managed, or a client that's considering to hiring um, these embedded uh, folks, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. What suggestions or recommendations do you have for clients that are, that are about to make this move? I think back to my earlier point, um, maybe just open up more and welcome us. More to transparency? Be, to be part of their uh, team operations. And um, uh, again, like having a workbook in their hands saying, okay, this is what this team will do. And this is how much they will know. And this is how I want to support them. This is how their company will be part of that effort. Having that a handbook in place is also important. Mm -hmm. So, so, so it's very clear. Everybody knows uh, that expectation. So, so all in all back to, to the word magic word transparency. So we, we, we keep transparent on our part. If the client can allow more transparency, I think the, the effectiveness of this overall a te team effort will be. And you mean better. including like, not just say I want this person, this role, but give more information about the deeper purpose and objectives and Yeah, yeah their day to day, what should they do and reason I want them to beha uh, behave in, in that way and how they should. Uh, sometimes because the embedded team are viewed or were so up by others as the client themselves, right? So uh, again, the more we do, the more we know, the more we can do better. And I, I think you mean by that also provide more value to the client, right? What do you think, Susan? Yeah, I, I totally agree. That's a very good point here. Um, I would suggest the client just use us more and use us wisely. We are here to support them. We're here to help their business. Uh, one example. Sorry, excuse me, before you go into the example, but that does not necessarily mean that we're charging them more. It's just like, just utilize us right yes. more, correct? Uh, and also correct. us in this world, is not only the embedded team themselves. Right. It's also people like us who are around the embedded team. Uh, many times I was invited to the client's meeting related to the embedded service, but not only that. So, so again, the more we are involved, uh, I think it really, it, it bring a different perspective to them as well. So, so you, you, you go through a lot of cooler ideas came out after, after the meetings. So I want to get back to that point. Uh, but hold on, Susan, you had an example you wanted to share. Sorry. You stopped me. I forgot. No, <laughs> it's one of my bad habits. Okay. Uh, what am I going to say? So there was one case is, um, uh, the client does have very regular communication with me. And he did share with me, like somebody in the team, I, I keep constantly asking him the feedback of the team. So he did share with me, uh, so one maybe need more leadership training, and then one may need something else, like communication, or some ways like writing. So in my like regular communication with that person embedded, now I just focus more, because then I send the same voice with the client. Uh, we need to work on this part. 
and I'm trying to help her to say, so what in the, in, if the next time, the same scenario, uh, what can you do, can we do differently? So we are helping her to grow and with a client like intention, uh, what exactly she want, he want looking, find this person's growth higher. And it's our interest too, because the embedding is our people and we want them to grow too. Right. So back to your point, Leo, about the, um, the kind of being, doing this in, in some sort of interactive way. What do you think about bidding? Like sometimes, oh, it's not good. Sometimes a client will actually do a bidding process for this, right? And then you don't have a chance to get to know whether it needs are just like, they just give you a piece of paper. Okay, just fill in a, a, a price, right? So that would be like the opposite of what you're saying, correct? True. So, but many times in that situation, if we are invited, hopefully we are already being briefed about what this is about, how, how long this contract will be. And yeah, I, th I think many times uh, we step in from one tiny, small job, one post, then we make the expand one, right to from one to 15. I think that's, that's a, that's actually a real situation. So yeah, I think we all need to allow each other a chance mm -hmm. to build on this. At the beginning, it's really a, a commercial process, but the more they can see your value, the more they can trust you, the more confidence you can gain from your client about we are going, all both going to invest on this. Uh, so, so this will slowly, slowly grow. And I think at this moment, if I'm not mistaken, 30 to 40% of our headcounts are embedded related. So, so that's how. Do we expect um, this type of service to grow? Are the trends in a growth mode around this? Do, are more multinationals going to continue or expand their, uh, these kind of outsourced services? Definitely. Uh, we already receive a lot of requests, right? Yes, I think yes. Um, uh, again, the more you can demonstrate the value and the more people can enjoy or seeing those, uh, or accept those values, uh, the easier. So it's interesting from, from Blue Ocean's point of view, for example, like it's not our main business, right? Um, and I know that the margins here are not actually very high. Why, why, why is it in our interest to do something like this? I think it really helps us on the long-term client relationship. That's our overall approach that we are building on a relationship other than win a, a small penny uh, every single time. Uh, so, so that's one part. Also, I think that fit into our positioning, like being the most premium service provider in the market. So that means whatever service is considered hard, difficult, but really being the, the premium, we should be able to stand there and take that mm. challenge. So, so yeah, I think all in all, if you want to con be considered as the, the best service provider, you cannot choose and take. You should be yeah. all in. What do you think, Susan? Do you agree with that or anything to add? Yeah, like we said early on, uh, those clients who request the embedded service, actually our existing clients. Mm -hmm. So, which means we already do some projects with them already. So that's another value we want to help our clients uh, to like, leave the worry to us. And we will, uh, you don't have to worry, we worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just to add on to what Leo said, I, I think that one of the benefits to us is that it, it makes the relationship closer with the client. And one of our core philosophies is that if we can be close to the customer, we better understand their needs, we can provide more value to the client. And by, by providing more value to the client, we can actually grow with the client more and it becomes a win-win, a true win-win kind of situation. And that's kind of a philosophical um, viewpoint for us. And also in the past 20 years, I think we all learned from our own experience, how to handle such a service. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's another reason that we are more confident to take this kind of a challenge compared to people really don't know what's going on and they have to, they don't have the legal infrastructure to support this. 
and they don't even have maybe a local entity to hire the people. So, yeah, I think I'm 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 rather confident and positive on the on this line of business. Yeah. Anything? Any last words or anything we want to add on before we wrap this up? Well, keep this going, right? I guess like we are going to keep a mind of openness for this, and and uh, again, I'm very positive. Uh, this will be a, a a future of our industry. Okay, Susan, anything? Oh, uh, well said. Uh, again, <laughs> we're here to support, and we're here to help. Well, that's great. So, a message to the clients, obviously, to uh, take advantage of us. Use this. We're here. Give us a call. And if you want to hear more about this, reach out to us, right? To okay. Susan. Reach out to Susan, of course. Susan, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Leo, thank you for being here in Singapore and joining us. Pleasure. Happy Friday, folks. See you next time. Okay. Bye, folks. Bye.